coaching, coaching always presents its own challenges. Um, you know, that, that never stops. And, and pressures. Uh, there's always pressure. But uh, the biggest pressure comes from, from within, from yourself, to do well. Obviously, I'm a Finn, and, uh, and uh, to be selected as your own country's uh, national team head coach is a great honor, is a great privilege. Um, and um, and I'm, I'm very proud I was, I was given that opportunity and be in an um, in, um, in, um, important role in terms of uh, developing my home country's football. Um, and, uh, and yes, I, I was fortunate enough to, to play 70 times uh, for my country and uh, wonderful memories. Um, was very honoured. And then to become a coach is, uh, was 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 unbelievable. Uh, really, the opportunity I got. Um, I had been previously managing in Scottish Premier League, and uh, when the Finnish FA approached me and uh, and um, and asked permission to speak to me uh, from from Kilmarnock at the time, um, you know there was there was only only one answer. Yes, of course, it would be. Would be fantastic uh, honor for me to 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 be a head coach of my own country that I played for. Um, obviously, I'm very patriotic, and uh, but uh, you know, um, very honored and, uh, and privileged. The VAR show, the one place for your weekly football update. Hola, very warm welcome to the VAR show, the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to continue with interviews and we have the head coach of Hong Kong national team, Mr. Miksu Patelainen. So, for those who do not know, he has had an illustrious playing career in Europe with various clubs and has represented Finland 70 times at the national stage and, and has also managed the likes of Finland and Latvia national team among a host of other top European clubs. So without wasting much time, I would like to first thank Miksu for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to your show. And I would like to begin by asking you, how are you and what are you doing these days? Um, first of all, um, um, I'm pleased to join you uh, and it's, it's good to talk to you. Um, uh, everything is good. I'm, I'm well. Um, apart from uh, no football, I'm uh, disappointed with that but because uh, obviously we want to... We want to to see players uh, performing and uh, performing um, at the moment because of pandemic, because of COVID-19. Obviously, um, the league over here is not running. Uh, so, um, just waiting, just waiting. Um, hopefully, uh, start of September, we can start seeing action again and uh, and uh, we can attend matches and, and see players performing. So, uh, but uh, overall, everything is good. Hong Kong is a beautiful place and, uh, and uh, plenty to do in terms of football developing uh, football here in uh, in Hong Kong and uh, and working hard towards it. Hopefully everything goes back to normal and you know like everyone can go to stadiums like previously hopefully and uh, yeah. uh, on that note you know like I'll talk of a lighter topic that is football in comparison to what's happening all around the world and I'll talk of you and you are currently the head coach of Hong Kong national team okay and how is it there like how is the uh, footballing culture and how is the everything infrastructure there? Football in Hong Kong is, is a big, um, football very important um, to Hong Kongers. Um, uh, it is a traditional sport here, and um, in the 70s, early 80s, um, Hong Kong did. They did everything, uh, they listen, they want to learn, they're hungry to learn. Um, tactically, uh, I think we have uh, loads to do. Uh, the, the tactical knowledge, improve the tactical knowledge of the players. Um, also, the play in player development science. Um, I think we have uh, plenty, plenty work there, um, and improve the players, uh, be better positionally, uh, creating expert players for each every pos uh, position uh, in the team. Uh, I think that is the um, We need to. Uh, Improve the players' attributes um, individually, 
um, not just not just footballing attributes as athletes also, but uh, the the attitude and the willingness to learn uh, is the same. Uh, that gives you the chance to improve things, places, and you have to be patient. You know, development doesn't happen like that. You have to be patient. You have to first of all put things in in place, uh, an action, um, and then um, then uh, then do it systematically. And, uh, hopefully, in the end of the day, you improve way as well. Yeah, definitely, and of course, uh, it takes time. You can't, Romo is not built in a day. It takes a lot of time to develop talents, even for a coach, of any coach actually. Genuinely, it takes time, and uh, of course, the rewards are very fruitful and very sweet. So uh, you know, like uh, you have, like in you have managed and uh, a lot of teams, you know, in Europe, be it club level or national level. So uh, where would you rank Hong Kong in terms of quality available to you? Well, like I said, uh, we do have a lot to improve. Um, uh, Hong Kong Premier League um, is not big. So, um, although um, when you look at the age structure of the league, um, it is quite old uh, in terms of average age of the team. Uh, don't start too many matches, um, but uh, hopefully we can we can change that uh, in the well, but like I said earlier, uh, everything comes from player development. Uh, if you can improve players' knowledge uh, positionally, tactically, uh, attribute-wise, uh, like in Europe, uh, I think uh, I think Hong Kong football would be better off. It's it's difficult to compare um, European football to Hong Kong football. Uh, basically, um, players' knowledge, uh, tactically, is better in Europe. Um, hence, there are quite a few, quite a few foreign players here playing in the league. Uh, quite a few uh, have um, have gained, been here long enough to gain the Hong Kong passport, um, and they are available for the, the national team, um, which is good. Um, and but uh, but overall, uh, it means that our own Hong Kongers, um, local guys, local youngsters, break into the full national team. And, um, and, um, and and do their best for their country. Definitely. And like, uh, 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 in terms of fan culture, how is the fan culture there? Every club, they have fanatic fanatic fans. Of course, nothing to the, the quantity of, uh, of European clubs, but, uh, but uh, they are passionate. Like I said earlier, um, football in Hong Kong is a very important thing to be. Uh, people follow that. There's a there's a big um, following of the uh, UK and the English uh, Premier League um, and um, and European football. Uh, so you know traditionally football is is big here, and uh, therefore uh, there are loads of fans here. Uh, attendances in the Premier League matches are not great. Uh, we do have about uh, uh, from thousand to two thousand people watching matches. Uh, so obviously nothing compared to the European and stuff, but hopefully we can uh, improve the product on the field as well uh, and give fans more uh, fantastic positive memories and um, and uh, we can increase the numbers. Uh, but but overall, we have fanatic fans here. Our national team is well supported. Um, obviously, we play at the big stadium, Hong Kong Stadium, which is which is a nice big stadium, um, and uh, and people come and watch and. They they create a fantastic atmosphere. Uh, they really are behind the team, and uh, and we are you know players and the coaching staff and the factory staff. We are we are grateful for that because uh, that gives the players uh, you know so much more. Um, and um, and um, it's all positive. It's all good. Definitely, I don't know. Like uh, whenever you are answering, the screen gets frozen, and when you stop answering, it becomes all right for some reason. All right. No, okay, it's fine. So we'll move on to the next question. Okay, and uh, this is your third national team that you are managing. I think after Finland and Latvia, what are the major difficulties that you faced in each of the national team that you have managed? Of course, every every country, every team is different, and um, culture uh, overall is different. 
to Hong Kong, to Finland, to Latvia. Um, uh, obviously, the three countries that uh, I have managed, uh, um, they have their own challenges. They have their own expectations. Um, and, and through that, you know, the targets are a little bit different. Um, all the, the similarity is that uh, all of the countries are relatively small in terms of population. Um, and uh, and it, they, are, they are smaller FAs and, uh, and uh, you know, perhaps uh, bigger nations in Europe uh, with bigger populations as well. But, uh, for example, Finland, uh, my, my just over four years as a, as a Finland head coach, uh, you know, we, we did a lot of uh, player development. Uh, we we we, um, we installed a, a player development philosophy uh, over there, and uh, and um, it is now producing um, you know good quality players. Uh, Finland obviously qualifying for European European Championship finals, um, which is a, which is a remarkable, fantastic achievement. Uh, but uh, but I think um, I think football in Finland is uh, is in good good state. Uh, the coaching. The playing style over there is good, um, and uh, talking about Latvia, Latvia is uh, is at the moment um, is uh, similar to Hong Kong in terms of a lot of development has to happen. Um, I think uh, that the player development structure, uh, philosophy, um, how it is ran um, and executed, um, I think there is uh, there is a lot to do over there. Uh, Latvia was successful, um, you know. 20, 30 years ago, um, and in European football, and uh, and they had a they had a great team. Uh, unfortunately, uh, today uh, the results are not as they were those days. But uh, but uh, again, again, football is a is a is a massive thing uh, in Latvia, and uh, and people work very hard to improve things over there. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, working over there with the people. Uh, Latvia is a beautiful country, Riga, fantastic capital capital city and uh, and all that so um, you know the, every country has its own challenges and uh, and its own um, um, style and uh, maybe because of culture cultural changes as well um, uh, differences uh, from from country to country so uh, you know it is it is for me as a coach um, it's a privilege and uh, I'm, I'm I'm pleased and I'm, I'm thankful that I've had an opportunity uh, to coach in uh, in many many countries, uh, different parts of the world, because for for me as a coach uh, to work in different cultures, different uh, type of football with different kind of people, uh, it develops me as a coach. It develops me as a human being, and uh, and I'm 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 greatly thankful uh, for that. And uh, I I do believe that uh, uh, I improve as a coach uh, more. I experience these things and these different challenges from country to country and and also from national team to the club football you know they those jobs are totally different but uh, you know you always learn something um, when you go to, to different challenges and uh, and um, I'm enjoying it I'm a, I'm a type of character who never wants to stop learning um, I am a student always a student of football and um, I think uh, you have to be if you want to be successful if you want to have a career uh, you have to have that that kind of mentality, and uh, and uh, I love it. I can't get enough, um, you know, football and uh, and learning new things uh, every day. Definitely, and like I wanted to ask you this question, okay? And like, you are a legend in Finland because you have represented the national team a lot. And how difficult, you know, is the pressure on you when you have had a, such a successful career with the national team that you go back and coach them? How much pressure is there? Because you are putting everything on the line. All your legacy that you have built up till now, you are putting it on the line. How difficult is it? Um, I don't think it's difficult. Um, coaching, coaching always presents its own challenges. Um, you know that that never stops, and and pressures. Uh, there's always pressure, but uh, the biggest pressure comes from from within, from yourself to do well. Obviously, I'm a fan. And uh, and uh, to be selected as your own country's uh, national team head coach is a great honor, is a great privilege, um, and uh, and I'm I'm very proud. That I was I was given that opportunity and be in um, in um, in um, important role in terms of uh, developing my home country's football. 
Um, and uh, and yes, I, I was fortunate enough to, to play 70 times uh, for my country and uh, wonderful memories. I um, was very honored. And then to become a coach is, uh, was, was, was unbelievable, uh, really. The opportunity I got, um, I had been previously managing in Scottish Premier League. And um, when the Finnish FA approached me and, uh, and, um, and asked the permission to speak to me uh, from, from Kilmarnock at the time, um, you know, there was there was only only one answer. Yes, of course, it would be would be fantastic uh, honor for me to 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 be a head coach of my own country that I played for. Um, obviously, I'm very patriotic, and uh, but uh, you know, um, very honored and, uh, and privileged. Definitely, and you touched on that you were with Scott in Scotland when they approached you. You have played almost for all the big clubs and a lot of clubs in Scotland. You have managed so many clubs in Scotland. Do you like Scotland more than Finland? <laughs> I don't think you can you can compare again. Um, Finland is my home homeland. Uh, I'm a Finn and I'm always a Finn. Uh, but um, I have lived uh, in my adult life. Um, adult life. Uh, I have lived more in Scotland than in Finland because I I played. Uh, I got the opportunity young age. <laughs> To go to Scotland uh, to play football, and then went to England, went back to Scotland, France, and um, just doing yo-yo between different countries, different leagues, and, and Scotland. Uh, but uh, no, no, uh, Scotland feels like home. That's where my home is. My home is in Scotland at the moment. Uh, but Finland is my my homeland. Uh, so uh, you know, they, they 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 play two different roles. Uh, you know, of course, I, I've been regular and was a pointer. Um, of course, I visit my relatives um, in Finland and, uh, and summer cottage and relax and, and uh, my friends. But uh, but Scotland, like Scotland, is my home and uh, and that what I, I would call home. Uh, my residence is isn't over there. Uh, although now, obviously, I, I, I'm here. No, uh, it was important. It's a special place for me. Definitely, and like uh, uh, you know, like uh, moving on from that, you also touched that uh, managing a national team and a club side is quite different. And I have the next question: like, uh, what is the biggest difference in managing a national team and a club team, and which one do you personally prefer? Um, I prefer them both. Uh, there's no, there's no. Um, um, I wouldn't say that uh, I enjoy national team more than club coaching. Um, I think um, club coaching is um, is uh, different in the way that you have you have your players at your disposal every day, and you have loads of time with the players, um, and uh, you have one week to prepare for the match. Uh, you spend a lot of time with them. Uh, you you can have you use your afternoons for the video analysis and and show players uh, opponents our own game. You can you can develop the players uh, more effectively because you have the players at your disposal every day. Um, national team coaching is is different in the, in the sense that uh, you have very little time. Uh, you really have to prioritize uh, what you do, what you cover. Uh, you you really have to, you know, be the training sessions. Uh, we don't do too too many meaningless, meaningless uh, small sided games or meaningless possession drills. Every every drill, every everything we do is is tactical. Everything we do is is geared towards how we play well against the next opponent. Yeah, because uh, we only have uh, uh, basically a couple of days to prepare for the match. Uh, so you have to prioritize and use your time well. Um, that that is the biggest challenge. Um, and then obviously uh, you play against the the best of the best from each country. So whenever you play a match, you know it's always a tough challenge, especially for a smaller nations. Um, and uh, and uh, so it represents uh, you know different kind of challenge to the club football. Uh, but uh, I can't say that. Uh, 
I'm in favor of uh, one over the other one. No, um, I've done both. I've been lucky, fortunate to get opportunities to, to have many clubs uh, I've, uh, I've coached, I've managed, um, and also three national teams. So uh, I enjoy them both. Uh, both, uh, I believe, um, I learn all the time. There's plenty to learn, <laughs> as always. And uh, and um, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to the challenges in the future. And definitely, like, I just wanted to again touch on that topic of national and club side. Okay, and it's like, is uh, just for a coach as a coach, is the national team just result oriented and uh, not uh, on? They do not focus on development because you do not have much time in comparison to club. Yeah, yeah, there is uh, there is less time to to spend with the players on the training ground, but um, I also do do a lot of. Um, player development um, as a national head coach um, outside the training ground, uh, outside the FIFA windows. Um, I invite our players to the, to the training ground um, to, to watch videos. Um, at the moment, um, this spring, we've been seeing the players regular, uh, giving them feedback from last autumn. And, um, uh, remind them because we we're not training together now uh, we're not playing matches now it's a long time since we were, we were together so it is important that uh, i refresh uh, our philosophy playing to the players and their individual roles in the team it is important that uh, you know they stay the information stays in their head um, because it's a long time since we were together so i've been doing that seeing the players regularly uh, reminding them about our playing style what we need to do uh, and also giving them uh, development ideas, how they can play better, their roles, how they can improve, uh, how they can practice uh, during these uh, difficult months uh, with the pandemic. So, um, so you can you never stop coaching, you never stop improving players, even though the situation is very challenging at the moment. But uh, you, you you need to use your uh, your um, uh, imagination. How, how can I be in touch with the players? How can I get information across to them and make them better players, no matter what? So, you know, like, uh, definitely, and that's what, uh, that's the need of the hour to be innovative, you know, with all whatever is going around. And, of course, football is secondary compared to many lives and what people are doing. Okay. So, you know, like, uh, I'll touch on more tactical part. And if you had, like, what is your footballing philosophy? Like, how do you see football? Yes, it's... Um, my, my playing philosophy um, uh, is attacking. I want to be attack coach. I want to be. Uh, I want my team to keep the ball, but not only keep the ball, but be dynamic with the and progress with the. Uh, football is a game of direction from your goal to the opponent's goal, uh, so it is very important that you you have that dynamic end in your game um, and uh, and progression. But uh, but of course when you. When you coach um, a so-called uh, uh, less team um, and smaller country, and you play against the uh, big football in there, you can be too open, too attacking and expansive. Um, especially when you play against the teams that uh, are your level, and then then it's totally different. So that play style changes um, depending on the opponent. Um, and uh, but the basic things are the same; they stay the same. But uh, you have to be organized. You have to be um, be solid. You have to be. Uh, you have to stay in the game. If you if you're too open and the opponent scores uh, quickly two three goals, you know you got no chance. So you need a game, and you have to be be clever in terms of nullifying the opponent's uh, uh, strengths and uh, and give yourself a chance uh, to score that one goal perhaps to give you a victory. Uh, so, um, so although I'm a tactic coach, uh, you know, I don't want to be stupidly brave. Uh, always, uh, you have to be brave to, to take the ball and keep the ball and uh, brave enough to pass the ball uh, positively. But um, you always have to be uh, sensible and uh, not stupid. Definitely. And yeah, of course, it's, it will be very stupid to, you know, like just stick to your philosophy and keep losing games. It's like. That will not make sense. You have to adjust and you have to be pragmatic. It doesn't. It doesn't. But uh, what's what's important also for me is that uh, um, you use the preparation time before the matches um, 
well towards the individual players. Um, every player who enters that pitch must know his role, must know what is expected, what he should do in certain situations. And, uh, and therefore, therefore, on the training ground, when you prepare for the matches, you don't want to waste any, any, any time. You want to give the players information. Every individual player must know their role and do it and practice their roles. Um, therefore, the video, video sessions I'm doing now with the players are very valuable. They can see the mistakes they've made. They can see the good things they've made. Um, and they, can, they, they, they strengthen and build you know, the, the knowledge of their role in the side all the time. Whether we're talking attacking, whether we're talking uh, defending, transitions, uh, set plays, um, all areas of the game. Uh, it is very important that uh, players go out on the pitch knowing exactly what's being expected and what they should do. That also increases the player's confidence. Um, whatever you do in life, if you know what you're doing, you're more confident. Uh, same applies in football. You must know what you do, what's being expected of you and do it. Definitely okay, and uh, again, this is again, uh, again, it will depend on uh, the players available and the quality of the team available. But if you had to choose one formation, which is your favorite, which one would you choose? Formation? Yeah. I like 4 3 3. I do like 4 3 3 because of the, of the flexibility of it. Uh, 4 3 3 very easily will, um, will, will go when you're defending to. To four five one um, system. Uh, if you want to be uh, more attacking, you keep the four three three formation, and the three midfielders obviously uh, need to do more shuffling uh, in the midfield. I, I like the back four because uh, I like my full backs to get forward. Uh, sometimes even same time, depending on the opponent against you. You want to make sure that you don't leave yourself open when you have the ball. Um, uh, behind you. You, you, you want to make sure that uh, you have the right balance um, uh, when you attack, um, and uh, and that. So uh, that is a flexible system. That is a good system uh, to to tweak your playing style against different opponents. Uh, from from defending to attacking, um, it is easy for players to understand. Also, the white players, how high they are, and all that. That makes a big difference. Um, and of course, how compact your team is. There's no, there's no big holes uh, between the lines. Very, very important thing in inter international football and club football also. Uh, so, but uh, I, I would I would choose. Um, I played three at the back. I played the three-four-three formation as well, which is a flexible system also. Um, I like that as well. But uh, I would prefer four-three-three. Okay, and, and uh, you know, like uh, I'll, course, I'll, I'll, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I continue? Yeah, course, yeah, please. The more, the most important thing when you when you think about formation is uh, what what type of players you have uh, available to yourself. Um, the players really, the players' ability, the players' attributes uh, dictate what formation you play because because everything depends on that. You can't ask players to do things that they are not comfortable doing. Um, if, if you have if you don't have certain type of players you can't play perhaps 433 you need to think about uh, another system where their attributes and their their um, ability um, comes into in the, in the fruition but uh, so players dictate that and coaches we as coaches we need to be flexible we need to be able to 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 understand what is the best formation best tactics uh, for that specific specific players and specific team. Um, so uh, I think that's very important to, to notify. Definitely, and uh, you know, I always had this uh, doubt. Like you know, you you were playing, and you suddenly you moved into management after your playing career. You did not have gap when you moved to management. How difficult was it from going from playing to management? Not difficult at all. Um, I was obviously uh, I I had a long career. I was. Um, uh, I played until 38 years of age um, in Scotland, um, my final years, um, and uh, and last three four years I was already coaching uh, and playing. Um, I was uh, I started uh, while I was playing first team football for Hibernian in Finland. I started coaching the youth teams uh, first. I had under 15s, then I had under 17s. 
and 15th and 17th same time. So I had two teams I coached and played first team. Um, then I went to St. Johnston in, uh, in the player assistant role, assistant manager role. Um, so that was, a, that was a great year for me. Um, Billy Stark, um, who, was, who was a fantastic manager. Um, I learned a lot from him. Uh, being uh, being his number two was uh, was was uh, was big thing for my career. Then I moved to San Mira in uh, in a similar type of role. I was the first team coach. I also took under under 19s, and we got to the Scottish Cup final um, to Hamden against Celtic. Unfortunately, we lost two one the game, but uh, nevertheless, uh, that was a busy year because I I played first team, I coached first team, and I took reserves. I took under 19s. There was a lot of work. But the uh, more you work, more you learn. And obviously, being a young coach, and uh, I had uh, big aspirations, uh, you know, to, to be eventually a manager myself. Um, you know, those years were very, very important in terms of uh, learning, coaching. Um, you, you do your coaching courses, but it is the coaching uh, every day uh, that teaches you, that develops you as a coach. It's very important to coach and do a lot. Um, and uh, and make mistakes and learn and and uh, and and gradually improve yourself. Um, so so I was lucky that I was a player and I also had a chance to coach at the same time. And then then when uh, when um, I stopped playing, I finished my career 30, 38 years of age um, and became a manager. Uh, it wasn't difficult at all. I was already on that coaching uh, ladder, if you like, and uh, I was thinking as a coach. Um, that's when I became the head coach, a manager, as they as they call it in the UK, um, and uh, and I started implement my own ideas, my own tactics, and uh, and all that. So, uh, but uh, but then again, I I, I joined a part time club, uh, Cowden Pith, as my first club. Uh, I started low level. Uh, we were fortunate; we we won the league, uh, my first season as a manager, and uh, and it all went from there. So, uh, you know, you need you need luck on the way, but. Uh, like uh, like a famous golfer said one day, uh, it's funny that uh, the harder he practices, the luckier he gets. Definitely, and yeah, and uh, like you know, like uh, I'll ask you this next question. It's more related to your current job, and uh, what 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 is the aim with the national team in the next? Uh, how much ever time you are there, what is what is your goal that you have set out? I've been here now um, fifteen. 16 months um, over a year now in Hong Kong and uh, obviously now I, I know exactly uh, what's going on uh, in Hong Kong football. Uh, I know exactly the areas we, we need to develop. Uh, we are over here, we are realistic. Um, um, the target that we want to achieve team today um, is not sky high. Uh, we put emphasis on developing our players. We do put emphasis on developing our youngsters for the future. And then maybe, then maybe 15, 10 to 15 years of time, um, then, uh, then we should expect much better results and much better um, um, performances. Um, of course, we want to improve and we want to improve as quickly as we can. But you, in development, you need to be patient. You need to uh, uh, make realistic targets and uh, and then work towards it. Uh, but I think it's very important that uh, you have a vision uh, as a as a FA, as a as a club, um, as a player, as a manager. It's always important to have a vision to, towards which you work every day. That gives you the the direction. That gives you the motivation. That gives you the 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 desire to work hard every day towards that vision, whatever it is, uh, as a player, to play in the top league of in, in Asia, in Europe, whatever, uh, as a manager, one day the coach over there, uh, or, or whatever, uh, as a club, to win, to win leagues, uh, promotions, whatever, uh, as, a, as, a, as a national team, to qualify for the Asian Championships, to qualify for the, for the World Cups, uh, that vision is very important. That gives meaning for everyday work. Definitely, and like uh, again, uh, this is again a wider question. And uh, of late, have you been impressed, or have you been following any other coaches' work? Well, it's uh, of course I've learned a lot from other coaches uh, when I played. 
Um, I had uh, fantastic coaches that uh, from each and every one of them, I you learn something. Um, when when now I'm I'm a coach uh, manager, uh, there are spells um, that uh, I'm not working, and in between jobs, it, that that period is very important to develop yourself. Look back what you've done in the previous job, um, and and maintain that. But also go and see other coaches uh, uh, coaching and uh, and perhaps pick up something from them. Uh, I use that time that I'm not uh, in the work. I use that time to 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 develop myself, to go and watch other coaches uh, coaching, uh, talk to them about their philosophies, about their routines, how they go about. Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, there is no right and wrong in this game. Uh, result decides. And um, and uh, from, from every coach, you learn something. Somebody, some some coach might be very very heavy on uh, sports science. You go and ask him what you do, why, you know, what other methods, um, and blah blah blah. How how does it improve? Um, and uh, some coach might be absolutely fantastic in man management. You go and ask him about that side of things. Some some coach might be attackingly fantastic, tactically brilliant. Ask him, watch him, how he how he coaches his players. Somebody might be great defensively set piece wise whatever you want um, so so targeting those coaches and go and go and look at them and study their work and all that kids always gives you something or you always learn something you pick up something you're changing ideas with the coaches um, it might it might be nothing new to you but it, it strengthens your own opinion it strengthens your own ideas your philosophy it is very important to, to do that and uh, this is what I do um, uh, to develop myself, and uh, and always when I'm um, out of the job, when I'm between uh, jobs, um, I do that, and uh, and uh, to ensure that uh, when I go to the next job, I'm better off. I'm a better better manager and more equipped again. Definitely, and like that's a very good uh, philosophy to follow and a uh, practice to follow. And uh, I'll ask you like next because you're the next question is more on your experience as a player and as a coach. If you had to give an advice to an upcoming coach, young coach, what advice would you give that coach? I would say that uh, it is important to have your own identity as a coach. Um, have your own playing philosophy. Have your own strategy. Have your own way of coaching, uh, teaching the players. It is very important that every player gets the message uh, how they how they need to operate on the pitch in certain situations. Of course, during the game, during the match, there are thousands of different situations, um, and you can't you can't possibly touch every situation. But you can you can keep the player the framework and uh, and the most important things what he should do. Um, during the game and it is important that the player understands his role um, and it is important that the player practices his role and does it better and better all the time um, through this when you go through every individual player you create the the team's playing philosophy playing style you knit the individual jobs together and that's a team performance team performance comes from individual players performances so it is important to tackle to talk to those individual players about their roles if you talk abstract to the whole team all the time your message to the team is general is abstract it is not exactly what certain players should do it is important to to understand um i think uh, so 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 if you have that kind of mentality uh, then you become a player's coach you become you're helping them to improve. You're helping your team performing better because individual players are improving better, uh, performing better. So, uh, to a young coach, I would like to give this to think about this, not not to do this, but to think about it. And uh, because um, I've I found that uh, this uh, it's beneficial to you as a coach. So definitely, and uh, you know, like on that note. Uh... Coach Mixu, thank you so much for talking to me and I wish you all the best with your endeavor that is the national team and I hope you can take them as far as you can and hope you can achieve all your goals and milestones. 
and hope we can talk again soon thank you so much for coming take care stay safe bye thank you very much it's been a pleasure to be in your program and uh, i wish you good luck and uh, to all the all the people in in uh, nepal football thank you very much good luck thank you and just stay safe